going. You guys are enjoying the HTC tournament so far. We are back. We took a little bit longer in that break because there were some technical issues we had to solve. But uh, yeah, overall, we're doing pretty well. So I hope you guys enjoy the show. Uh, for you guys, we have uh, Lothar versus Strife Crow coming up. Uh, Strife Crow on the HTC player side of things. Uh, what do you think about this matchup, Nimsh? Uh, you mentioned that maybe uh, Lothar was bragging a little bit. Oh yeah, he was. Uh, he was firing some shots at Strife Crow because um, I think they faced each other three times, and uh, all three times Lothar actually won. So I heard that he's, uh, you know, bragging that hey, Strife was easy. I won for him three times. I will win again. And uh, to be honest, like Lothar actually, even though in the beginning of Hearthstone he was kind of struggling to get the, the wins and uh, to get good ranking, like recently he was doing really well. At some point, like even he was the, the highest rank Nihilum player or Nihilum, however you say that. So better than life coach, better than RDU and Tice. As that was pretty impressive. But at the moment yeah. he's I think top fifty, and uh, Strife Crow is fifth in the world at the moment. Yeah. Well, Strife Crow has held the top spot, like not just on his team, just the top spot uh, for uh, I think overall quite some time. Maybe in fact the most. I think him, Firebat, and Colento uh, have shared that top spot like about as much time as one another. So Strife Crew is one of the best players in the game. Certainly if you beat him the last three times you were matched up against him, it's it's something perhaps worth bragging about. But uh, yeah, we'll see if it goes down here because, uh, well, it's it's Hearthstone. We've seen, we've seen the more prepared players uh, not actually win their games. Um, so in the end, there is that, that strong element of chance that does uh, influence the game quite a great deal. That's quite true. And the matchups are actually mirrored. So uh, here, is it? would you say it's a 50-50, just looking at the classes? Um, I consider Strife Crow as like, in, in, my, in my book, there's like top tier players, and there's like above top tier players, which like 99% of the time, they're playing exactly as well. But that 1%, they kind of like see something that nobody else really sees. And I kind of put Strife Crow in that bucket. So even though maybe he's lost the last three matches against Lothar, um, I'd, even if the decks are card for card exactly the same, I'd give the uh, the 50.1 percentage point to uh, to Strife Crow here. I would uh, I would actually agree, but uh, on the other hand, Lothar will have an edge, the mental edge, because he is not afraid of Strife Crow. He won versus him a couple of times, so right now he's coming into this uh, this match um, having this this mental advantage. Uh, but Strife Crow, I don't, I don't think Strife Crow has a disadvantage. Like no. Strife Crow is just playing versus Lothar as like a ladder game. He, he will not be afraid of uh, of Lothar, even though he lost uh, versus him a couple of times. Yeah, Strife Crow basically plays PVE every time. Doesn't really care what he's yeah. up against. <laughs> kind this, of, yeah. this might just be Ragnaros, guys. Just Ragnaros. Whatever, Yogs man. are on, and our yeah. and our yeah. old got to slay. All right, well we'll get we'll get into the game here shortly. Um, the players, uh, they, they are playing mirrored, but they, uh, they are playing the, the same classes that we've kind of uh, thought quite dominant. They're playing the lineup Hunter, Warlock, Warrior. And uh, I mentioned that so far this lineup has not been too successful. Um, it's tried three times so far, and out of those three times, it's only gone through uh, to tomorrow's uh, series of matches uh, once. And it was when the, Warlo when the Warrior was a control warrior, so it wasn't even the expected uh, archetype of the three classes. And Warlock was a Malaga's Warlock, so definitely something. Oh, that's true. A bit, a bit different. Yeah. So even, even though it seems dominant, it seems like a going trend. Like you know, people always expect these classes to be the best ones, but because they're often teched for, just the the vanilla best three just doesn't seem to work. Uh, Hearth is a game where um, usually if there's a class that's like the best and doesn't have a counter, it doesn't stay the best for very long because Blizzard does something about that. Uh, the best of something usually has a counter, and uh, that's why these tournaments can can get pretty interesting uh, because um, there's a lot of like sub game that that really happens. Yeah, I certainly agree. And also, Hearthstone is a game of information. So if you play those those archetypes, the decks that are really cookie cutters, your opponent will know exactly what do you do on certain turns. And if you bring decks that are not that um, popular, like Priest. It's really tough to play against it with uh, whatever deck you get. Um, a matchup that is untested, and you might you might actually lose there. Mm -hmm. Well, we are in the game here. We see Hunter versus Hunter. We see very similar decks, but we see the Kazan Mystic oh, on yeah. a Lothar side of the board. And um, actually, I think it's time. Oh man! Oh, just steal the secret. Yeah, that's uh, a pretty huge swing. <laughs> 
Oh man, this this is really tough for Strife Crow, and he doesn't really have a turn four, turn five play. Not the big one. <laughs> it's oh, a man. trap. There's an Admiral Akbar face. Yeah. It actually worked. Pretty good stuff. Wow, Strife Crow actually doing smiling. really bad. Not only has Strife Crow lost the opener on the board, he got his secret Kazan, which is a ridiculous tempo swing. He got some not so great beast out of the web spinner, and he drew his other freeze trap. That's terrible. Is this yeah. even like a winnable game anymore? Well, maybe if he gets a Hound Master and he is able to play the Snapjaw now, then Hound Master the Snapjaw into 4 8, 4 9. Uh, that might and then suck. bounce the Hound Master and then play it again after the high main? Possibly. The, the, trap, the, the secret is the freezing trap, right? Right. So he, he'd have to not attack with the turtle, he'd have to freeze. But he can play the turtle and maybe then unleash the Hounds to, to play around the freezing okay. trap. Well, he's going to the safer play. This play um, basically just extends the game to a few more turns. And because he is going first, he has that mana advantage. So, um, again, he's kind of playing from behind. But by extending the game, perhaps he draws into more options than requiring the Houndmaster top deck next turn, which seems fairly unlikely, I'd, I'd guess. Yeah, that was really well played. And also, Strifeco will be the, the first player to play the high main. Because on his turn six, the high main mm -hmm. will drop. And then Lothar will have to do something about it. Huffer? Huffer! Always Huffer. Always Huffer. Oh, Strike was not, not happy about that. We saw we saw some eyebrow movement going on. <laughs> yeah, it's really hard to like face Strife Crow with uh, his poker face. Mm -hmm. Alright, well that Huffer's taking four damage anyway. Like if you play the turtle, um, he's just gonna hit face, of course. So uh, just taking four right off the bat and developing the weapon. He chooses that over getting a second attack with the turtle two turns later, which uh, I think uh, matches up quite nicely. Yeah, it's pretty good. Um, well, next turn he will be able to play the high main, but what do you do as Lothar right now? Just a uh, single jugger doesn't make much sense. So fight damage to face. Uh, Lothar realizes that he's the aggressive one this game. He's the one pulling mm -hmm. up damage. Not attacking with the bow. Okay. Will he want to use the bow for the trades? Possibly. Well, you didn't see any uh, board development here. Uh, you didn't see any trap development, so you just play the high main. Powerful Certainly, play. Uh, Strifecore is doing pretty well. It's really going to be based on uh, the freeze trap interaction um, with the high main. So Lothar hopes that his freezing trap will actually work versus the high main, but we know that there is Unleash the Hounds. Oh, Dr. Boom, but uh, he can't play it. Can you play it? Just yellow play Boom and yep. hope you're not dead. Yep. It's 10 plus... Uh, I've... Oh man, this is really close. Uh, if you... Unleash? Juggler, yeah. Juggler, Unleash is actually possible. Yeah. I think that might be that might be the play. Like if you have master, you will not have enough. That's eight, ten, thirteen points of damage. Yep. Wait, juggler, juggler not. Unleash. no, not enough because you can't you can't uh, use the hero power. Yeah, mana short. Juggler, juggler, unleash. Is that really the thing? I mean, yeah, it is eight. If, nice. if the boom bots kill the high main, you actually gain damage. This is pretty sick. Okay, oh, he's going yeah. for it. Oh boy. Four. Oh, that's a good first juggle, by the way. Yeah. This is going to be some really long animation time. Well, he needs to hit face maybe one more time and for three dogs to survive. No, wait, he has three, so six more. Not really, not really. Didn't yeah, work. Yeah, fairly, fairly poor face push there. But uh, still in an extremely good spot. Strife Crow can clear, I believe. Yeah, but he has to bounce one of his um, one of his hyenas first, and then play Unleash. I think he's dead next turn to Hero Power Eagle Hornbow. Yeah, I mean, there's no real way around that from what we see. Oh, oh maybe there is. Maybe there is. If if he plays the web spinner, 
after killing a juggler and then killing the high main, then the juggle from the two spawned hyenas kills the web spinner and maybe he gets a taunt. He's like a silverback patriarch. That's uh, a yeah. that's a long shot. Really. <laughs> that's really a long shot. Well Sniper doesn't know that there's a bow, so he will try. Please. Yeah, I mean you obviously you obviously play what you see. Especially when you're behind, you have to take risks. Actually, you're dead of the board still, so never mind. Okay. Well, yeah. he went through the motions anyway. Yeah, I mean, it's good to go through the motions because it's in a complicated turn like that with, um, you know, many, many attacks and many interactions between the creatures. It's kind of hard to see if you're actually dead. So I don't think Strife Crow was like going through the motions just for the sake of it. I think he was just verifying um, if there was some chance he didn't see, at least on the board. And, uh, well, we didn't even see it. So, you know, makes sense. Went through it. Decided there's absolutely no way he can stay alive, realized. And he is out of there. Lothar takes game one in, uh, you know, kind of what he expected, I guess. But, uh, man, that Kazan at the start of the game really was it. Like, that was massive. Ha absolutely massive. Well, uh, Stryker is still in the game. He has that midrange hunter, uh, warlock warrior. So mm -hmm. it's not over yet. And it will really depend like what Lothar is going to play. I think he might be playing the zoo. He, he loved the deck. He played it a lot. And with Warrior, he, he can be playing Control uh, or Patron. Like, he likes both of them. Mm -hmm. I don't know about Strifecrow, though. Uh, he likes Zoo as well. You think Strifecrow likes Zoo more than uh, Handlock? I, think I feel he like Strifecrow is mostly like a Control type of player. Uh, yeah, he is most, uh, mostly Control, but he played a lot of Zoo. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I don't know if recently... He played Recently, I think he played Malikos deck. We, which uh, we should be able to see uh, pretty soon. Well, we will see a uh, Warlock versus Warrior matchup here in a second. And uh, we will see exactly what type of deck it is. Uh, from the looks of it, which you guys will see in a second, it seems like it might be the Dragonlock. Yeah, Striker was playing a, a lot of Dragonlock on stream, and uh, he was trying to perfect the deck. There's uh, still a, a couple of flexible sp uh, spots. Uh, people play double BGH, Mm. One, two, zombie chows, uh, far seer, no far seer, one so far, double so far. Really depends on the style. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure which version is Strifecrow actually playing. I think he was playing one so far, he was adding some um, specific cards. Well, he's uh, waiting up the mulligan phase. Seems like both players are. They're really uh, absolutely trying their best to win here. Lothar makes the, the first move, it seems. We don't quite see what he got, but uh, we do see the, uh, the Bible stuff? Thump Bible thump face. Yeah, but he is crying. Uh, that seems like a decent hand. Like, Can you really expect for much more than that when you go first as a Grim Patron Warrior? I think it's alright, but you want the draw. Uh, you are definitely happy about Harrison and the weapons. Uh, Warsong is not that meaningful for now. Uh, he needs Acolyte, he needs Battle Rage. And uh, mm -hmm. for Strife Crow, that's a very good hand. Uh, you might want to get um, a Twilight Drake, but other than that, you're happy with the um, Gangos early, and you have two combo pieces for Torison. You might even Torison on five. Okay. And that coin is really important in this deck, I'd imagine. Yeah, it's uh, it's good to, to have the, the coin for Torison, but uh, more or less, what you want to do versus Patron, you are favored, uh, because this deck is able to pack a lot of damage early, Mm -hmm. And then it has the clears for patrons, so there is a Hellfire that we can see, there is Shadow Flame. Uh, also, those are flexible spots. Some people play double Hellfire, some people play double Shadow Flame, or like one Shadow Flame, one Hellfire. It really depends. Uh, but overall, this hand is, uh, is pretty good for Strike at the moment. He will be able to pressure Lothar, and then he will have that combo. If he picks up a Soul Fire uh, before he plays Stories, and that would be great, uh, or a second Dark Bomb. I also feel like um, if the Warrior gains enough armor, the the Malagos combo might just not work. Yeah, it is a possibility, but then how do you gain armor? You basically need to have patrons and armor smith. Mm -hmm. That's why you pressure with those minions. Like this deck is really about those uh, value minions, like Raptor, Twilight Drake, um, Azure yeah. Drake as well. Most of those. <laughs> yeah, the, well, they are good minions. 
So it may seem pretty bad to throw a 5-4 into a uh, death spite, but the idea is that leaving a death spite up is one of the fundamental pieces for the Grim Patron deck to pull off a combo. So denying that uh, is value in itself. And also he takes 5 damage. Mm -hmm. And uh, this turn he will just play the Azure Drake to draw a card. He, know that he knows the death spite is out. It's pretty in a pretty good shape. It's it's actually pretty tricky to play this deck versus Patron. A versus Patron after a certain turn, you don't want to have small minions on board because you don't want to give your opponent patrons unless you're baiting them into overextending with patrons so that Hell you can firing control. or something. Yeah. Well, Striker has the answer, so I think he's not really worried about that. The question is, like, do you want to maybe draw different or more cards? before you head into a uh, Emperor Tharsen turn? Uh, you might want to have a Soulfire, um, because with Soulfire, uh, then on turn 9, you can unleash the combo, which is 17 points of damage. But uh, I think at this point, he actually can play it. He has two important cards, so uh, right now he's probably counting, is this enough? Uh, if, if he plays Tharsen now with this, uh, at least, and Soulfire, he, he will still be able to uh, Dark Bomb so far after Malagos in turn 10. Okay. Uh, how can Lothar deal with this? No, he really just plays that. his own and hopes that Strife Pro trades. So Dorisan has Super Taunt, right? Yeah. You have to attack into it. Um, what do you think of just like uh, BGH Argus here? Oh, um, no, you can even heal by Argus. Oh, that's true, because of the discount. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah, much better. It's much better uh, also because you have a combo you might be aggressive here. Yeah. You don't no, care that much about uh, opposing Torison, I believe. A Strife Crow, Strife Crow curse. I, I guess, like, he can, uh, he can... He still has time. And he doesn't want to have super cheap frothings. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, a charge and two frothings in a whirlwind right now, that looks really scary. Like every, actually, every single turn, like is it lethal? Actually, hold on. It might, it might actually be lethal with uh, unstable, unstable ghoul. You can uh, you can inner rage on unstable ghoul to kill the heal bot. Oh man, that's pretty sick, actually. Quick math, should be enough. There's seven minions. Seven a piece. You get times two. Oh yeah, easy. Yeah, that's like 40 like damage. Six, that's like yeah. 40 damage. You think yes. it's 60 damage? I don't think it's 60. That's a lot. That's definitely lethal, lethal damage. That's the I power just want to see how much this is. You said 60. I think you're actually closer to the truth here. No. Nope. It's, uh... Oh man, I was right there. Look at that. 37. Oh no, I think there's an attack. 34. Okay. 30, just, just, just 34 damage. The power not of even a big deal. Yeah, some people not actually say big. this deck should be called the uh, Frothing Warrior, not the Green Patron Warrior. Well, the Frothing Warrior was called Math Warrior, right? Math uh, Warrior? Razor, Razor was playing a lot of it, yeah. Okay. Do you remember Razor's Math Warrior? That was basically Grim Patron Warrior without the Grim Patrons. And yeah, I mean, it got him, it got him to high ranked legend. It just requires a lot of technical play. And um, that deck was very similar to what we saw from... Who was it? Nairia, I believe, where you had some of the armor gain mechanics to try to stay in the game longer to really push for the frothing damage because you know you didn't have such an obvious way to combo out the uh, the damage. It wasn't at times where there was no Thorison, right? Right. So no Thorison also delayed you a few turns. Uh, no patron also made it so you had to often draw more cards. It was much more inconsistent as a result. But Lothar are doing really good with that deck, uh, taking yeah. a favorable matchup. Yeah, his, uh, I, don't know, I don't know how we call it, his uh, cockiness is kind of uh, working out. I mean, uh, he thought he thought he'd dominate Strife Girl, and so far he is. And right now, this is again the situation where he only has one deck uh, against three decks. But um, I think whatever Warlock he plays, he surely has one good matchup at least. Mm-hmm. Well, we are going to see the uh, Hunter of Strife Crow into the Warlock of Lothar here in a second. Um, what, do you, what do you think Lothar is playing? 
I was, I was saying Zoo. I was saying Zoo because he really loved the Zoo. He played a lot of Zoo on ladder in tournaments as well. Uh, so it's certainly... There it is. You're right about that. Double egg with an activator and a one drop and a doom guard. That is pretty damn good. Yeah, and it's again um, a bad matchup for Lothar, but with this opening, he might actually take it. What do you think about the egg opener? This is actually not going to work out. Uh, you will expect a mad scientist, so I think it's fine to open with the egg. Uh, if you if you have like a flame imp, you might be afraid of Leaf Zuka. Mm -hmm. Well, he uh, saves the flame imp, draws another one drop. Um, even though it doesn't work out in uh, the form of the mad scientist, it does work out with the top deck void uh, walker. I always mix, mix them up. I'm never like sure. It's like, is that the, the void walker or the void caller? It's just void dudes, and they look very similar. I don't it's know. the void dudes, the void brothers. Void dudes. Yeah, void bros. It's, re it's really confusing, yeah. I mean, right. Sephiro doesn't really have a turn. Yeah, Lothar doesn't have much of a turn either, but he's winning. That part's important. When both players have no turn and you're winning, you're still going to be winning. Yeah, that's certainly true. You got a second Doomguard, but... Uh, right now, you know that the double Doomguard is not that bad. Not not as bad as it used to be. With the one of the Void Brothers, you can actually bring it back. Yeah. Now, the mana efficient play here kind of sucks. Like, it's, it's you egg, which makes it a bigger liability versus Unleash, and you Abusive nothing, which is a problem because you have no other activator and you have two eggs on board. So I think you actually tap. Yeah, I, f I think you, you might tap here. Um, because your board is still good, you know it's a Snake Trap now. It was no Explosive, no Freezing, so you, you just attack with the Flame in. Oh, he's just going for it. Just going for it. Max dips. Okay. Um... Well, we don't need to see uh, Unleash, Unleash here. Good. No, I think I think actually Houndmaster on the web spinner might be good. That's kind of a risk against the silence, but I mean, what can you do? You really need those one ones to push for damage next turn. I think it's actually excellent uh, because of the snake trap. So you kind of clear most of the minions, and you do have a possibility of oh, a wow. situation. Oh, no, I, I absolutely think Handmaster was the play, but what do you think about the, the targets, the Web Spinner versus the Haunted Creeper? Uh, I like it because you put more minions on board. So yeah, more... that, seems to be, that seems to be the main advantage. So there is an Activator for Lothar. Very nice one. But then there are the snakes. Okay. That's a really big board from uh, Lothar suddenly, from uh, both of those activating and killing off the Houndmaster. Uh, you have Unleash, but it's not really as good anymore. Unleash will be three minions. Can you clear it with uh, three more minions? I, I think you might just need to quick shot one of the spiders. Okay. Or you can also go face. Can you go face? I guess all you face. can. Looks like all face. Face it is. He has so much damage in hand with the Eagle Hornbow. But then there's Doomguard. <laughs> this Doomguard is so painful here. Uh, you might actually Implosion instead of Doomguard. You think so? I kind of like uh, YOLO, Doomguard, and all face. If you you, actually... you're, you're in position to race versus the Hunter, aren't you? Uh, yes, you are. Uh, you've seen one snake trap, and you will deal. This is 13 points of damage. Yeah, you, so. you threaten lethal. So the hunter has the trade into your minions. That's basically what you want in this matchup. That's true. A striker will get a secret. I believe there will be a freezing trap. It doesn't even check, so probably. Whoa. Where'd the weapon go? That's probably a spectator bug. On our ends. Mm -hmm. On the, or, or, or he might be thinking. Okay, so here yeah. you just uh, kill the uh, one Nerubian. You might kill the second Nerubian. And... Oh, is he no. actually... He's not killing the second Nerubian. Because with the freeze trap up, you need more than just uh, power overwhelming the win. 
So like Lothar is going to have to double top deck to have lethal here. Uh, he's thinking of killing the 4-4, which basically makes it impossible to die next turn, but extends the game several turns longer. I like your play. I like not killing the, the minions going for face, because you, yeah. you do threaten lethal next turn as well. And it, it's, I mean, you can lose if you're Strife Crew here, but it's just very unlikely. It has to be like abusive, and then... Because I'm Mystic. Oh god. <laughs> well, because I'm Mystic was not lethal anyway. Yeah, you couldn't, you couldn't like, um, do that tap and play something else. I think that draw actually makes it so Lothar is in real trouble here. Actually, is, is he just dead? He is uh, just dead. Yeah, he's dead, whatever happens. There is 8 points of damage incoming without the board. What can he tap into? Oh, he can tap into another Argus and just not if, attack. If he taps into Argus, that will help. Why do you think he attacked Doomguard first? Because if it's freeze, it doesn't actually make any difference. He's dead anyway. Uh, with the f Doomguard can attack next turn with charge. Oh, I see. And uh, right now, how much damage does he see? He sees 9 points nine. of damage. So yeah. he hopes that there is no, no damage at all coming from Strife Crow. Yeah. And the truth, the truth is, if if Strife Crow has 1 damage, he also has 2 damage. So killing a 1-1 one, one there makes no difference. Yeah. So a good play from both players. Um, there may have been like a way to uh, top deck out of that situation if you're Lothar, but it was also you know, just very, very optimistic. And he knows his deck better that there may actually not have been any option. So. Even if you go defensive versus Hunter, it's tricky because there are kill commands, quick shots. Mm -hmm. Like the more time you give the Hunter, the, the worse for you. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but it was uh, a matchup to begin with. Yeah. And uh, very solid stuff from both players. I mean, you know, you. On one end, you gotta look at the results because the players who have the best results over like months and many many tournaments, you know, they're they're probably like the best players in the game. Um, but when you look at like an individual game, you just look at the quality of plays, and I think the quality from both sides is very high in that case. So I see. Pretty pretty. That was pretty good. And now we will have Warlock Warlock or Warlock Warrior matchup. Um, this Zoo is actually bad versus Patron. So if Striker is bringing Patron. Mm -hmm. Then Lothar will be in trouble. Uh, on the other hand, Zoo is good. see the warrior deck. Versus... Have we seen the warrior deck? We haven't. And I don't think so. No, no, no. It was Hunter, Hunter, Warlock. Yeah, Dragonlock. The two yeah. losses were the Dragonlock and the Hunter dropping games. So, yeah. We will see the warrior coming up. We will see exactly what uh, Strife Crew is bringing. Uh, he is going to be matched up against the Zoo Lock again. Uh, Lothar is going to have to give it another try here. It has failed once, but uh, Zulak does just seem to be a pretty consistent deck overall, so uh, I definitely have to be in, in the Lothar bracket here. I know uh, I've asked you the last two times when the player was down uh, two games to one if you'd prefer to be in, in that spot. So for sure, you'd prefer to be Lothar here, right? Oh yeah, definitely. This is like exactly the same spot. Again, an aggro deck versus two decks that are control, because at this point I think the viewers can see and we can see that this is a control warrior. Yep, control warrior. Uh, probably. We've seen, yeah, we've seen, we've seen some wild <laughs> Grim Pager <laughs> decks today. We did. Like pl Players are really doing a warrior hybrid, uh, trying to find a solution. But uh, this should be a bad matchup for Strife Crow. Uh, he got the very important card, which is Firewar Axe, even both of them. Mm -hmm. But overall, Zoo is the deck that's good versus control because the constant flow of minions. But here, it seems like Lothar doesn't have a very good opening, and it might give Strifecore enough time to, to set up a shield and protect himself. Yeah, um, definitely looking really good for Strifecore already. I mean, he has basically the dream. Um, he's got the Acolyte, he's got the weapons. Maybe he has too many weapons, actually. That's, hmm. Maybe maybe he can get more dreamy than this, but this is pretty good still. Pretty damn good. I feel, though, that... Um, that Control Warrior was favored against Zoo at some periods uh, in Hearthstone. What do you think that was? Was that like pre-Imp Gang boss, perhaps? Uh, yeah, I think it was um, maybe post Nexramus, post Undertaker ban. Okay. okay. That was the moment, I think, because uh, the decks were packing a lot of minions. A warrior was able to deal with that, and then Undertaker got uh, worse, so that was the moment. Oh. We just saw a moment of uh, GVG RNG. <laughs> yeah. Now, there's a lot of RNG in Hearthstone, but GVG really introduced the wild ranges. So, 
the the difference here between like four and two is that with four you actually keep four one ones and your opponent draws one card with two you keep one 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 and your opponent draws two cards which is like an like in terms of hearthstone on turns three that's like a colossal difference it is in, that, that might be the difference that will actually change this game uh and yeah. lots are will be in trouble also that you, you take a mental blow when you when you see that when you miss and you just not kill the acolyte, you think like, "Oh my god, never yeah. luck." The thing is, that the zoo player needs to be a little lucky. Like when you're playing an aggressive deck and your opponent has like answer after answer, you're not you're just not going to win. Like you kind of count on your opponent either being not very lucky or not drawing perfectly. Yeah. Also, the long game favors warrior. So at this point, even though Lothar has a lot of cards, I think Strife Crew is in a very good shape. Lothar is at 16. <laughs> How crazy is that? Yeah, that's really crazy. And Strafkar actually has multiple weapons left. He got all the weapons, by the way. That's the second death fight. Uh, probably all the weapons. You think we he have... might play Gorhal? Gorhal boys, maybe. We've, I don't we've know. seen one uh, it, recently. It, yeah. it does rotate in and out of Control Warrior. It's not like... It's one of those like big flavor cards. Like Some people really like it. I think some others just completely write it off, though. Do you know if Warrior is running any hammer weapons? Is there like a hammer that Warrior can use? Yeah, the Ogre Warmall. Oh, I think you need to run it when you run Magni as your hero. Because when Magni attacks, he says it's hammer time, right? And you basically well, run axes. It would be pretty cool if uh, Ogre Warmall would be like 50% uh, chance to hit the wrong target and then comma unless you're Magni. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, that would be pretty sick. That would actually be pay to win though, so yeah. Okay, so there's the Ruben Egg with power. Works for Lothar. Mm -hmm. Pretty good setup there. Uh, he gets the Execute. Execute on a 4-4 is pretty decent. I think we're going to see it. Yeah, I think it's good like to clear the board here. And um, he still has the second Death Spy. He has the Fire War Axe. Those, those weapons represent so much damage. It's like 6 damage for 2 mana. It's better than Fireball. Yeah, he's playing the War Axe here, uh, which may seem a bit weird, uh, but he's doing that because he's basically locked into Dr. Boom on 7. Um, and he's doing that because, as it so happens, there's no chance of any 7 mana card being better than Dr. Boom next turn. Except maybe Geddon. And if it's Geddon, you play Geddon, I guess. Yeah, and you don't Same situation. Anyway. Yeah. Lothar has all the Defrado minions that he needs, but can he set up something that will that would be good. Is there any chance that if he gets a Morganis? Hmm. If he can do like a, a Void Caller, Void Terror play? Yeah. Oh Perfect. no, he's doing a Void Terror play here. Yeah, he might go for the Void Terror. On the other hand, oh, Void Terror sure. is also nice on, uh, on turn 7. Move the Void Caller into Void Terror. Let's go on face. Okay. I like the face hit. It makes it so you threaten more. He's going to get punished by BGH. It's a seven, seven attack. Might be, might be too greedy. Yeah, you kind of have to BGH here. So no, 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 Doctor Boom, not yet. Um, if you, well, you have to. Yeah, yeah you kind of want to see the draw. Yeah, you have to see the draw here. You definitely draw with the Acolyte, and uh, with Shield Slam, you you might just, uh, yeah, you can play everything. You have exact mana to... Yep. I don't think you but... had to see the draw, though. Like, I think if, I think you could have just BGH to 7-7, seven, seven, uh, play Shield Slam, or uh, Shield Block, and go face with Acolyte. And if the 4-4 four, four hits the Acolyte, then you can kill it with your weapon. And if it kills the BGH, then that's a good trade for you. Was he sure that he wants to play the, the Shield Block? You know, Shieldblock is like losing free mana, so maybe he wasn't certain mm -hmm. if he wants to play Shieldblock the turn. Okay. I think you're right. Yeah, that's a good juggle. Oh man, like, it's really, really close to lethal. Grumash, do you like Grumash here, overall? Just uh, instead of uh, Death Spite, maybe, attack face. 
Yeah, I mean, this lethal can get counterfeit a bit with uh, an owl. This will be over. There is silence and death spite, but uh, so no, no more galleys for Lothar. Yep, that's it. Oh wow! The series is tied. Match points. Two and two. Strefcrow with the potential full reversal here. Strefcrow uh, at the start of this uh, at the set of games was down two games to zero. Lothar had a commanding lead, um, and it seemed quite unlikely that Strefcrow was going to be able to come back. As uh, Lothar had the counters every game, he had the draws. His his plays were spot on. Uh, well, right now he doesn't have the draws, and he doesn't have the good matchups anymore. So things are not going well for him at all. So this will be the Maligos Warlock versus uh, versus the Zoo. Mm -hmm. How does that match up? Well, the Maligos has a lot of clears, um, so it it kind of plays defensively better than Handlock, I feel, because it has the clears and it has the minions. Yeah, um, I think it's definitely just, a good matchup for Strike. It Club. doesn't have that taunt wall, so you're you're kind of vulnerable to just the really good starts from the Zoo. If, uh, if they can just push for some damage at the start, and because you can't like effectively clear and taunt on the same turn, you might just get like, you know, robbed out of a game with like a double power overwhelm or like a doom guard power overwhelm. Yeah, but on the other hand, like you do have a lot, a lot of those cards, anti aggro, like there should be one zombie chow, some mortal coil, mm -hmm. some iron big owls. So, Strifecore, you know, like I'm impressed that Strifecore is playing one game at a time. He, he didn't get upset about losing, he's just yeah. focusing on the games. And I remember one series versus Tice. I think it was really back in the day. It was some some crazy best of uh, seven or something. And he was down three games, I believe, and then he won four in a row mm -hmm. from zero three to four three. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. Well, conquest format does kind of uh, allow the comebacks to happen, but it also punishes creativity a little bit. So, yeah, you get you get something, you lose something. Uh, but I have to say, you mentioned about the Zombie Chow in the uh, the Dragon Lock. Uh, we have not seen that card yet in his deck, by the way. That's true. Uh, maybe he did cut it, but we've only seen uh, we've only seen one game of mm -hmm. it. So um, we don't see it here. So that that might be it. That might be an issue. It's 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 a card that is is just so dominant in the early game if you get it out against uh, an aggressive deck because aggressive decks these days they capitalize off of one drops and every single one drop dies to the Zombie Chow. There's an interesting choice for Strifecrow now. Um, he can Dark Bomb or he can uh, Gamble and Imp Gang Boss. I think Dark Bomb is, is definitely better. Uh, he, in this deck, like normally you want to keep your Dark Bombs for the possible combo, Tauris and Maligos. But if you have two, uh, I think like just spending one is fine. Mm -hmm. he, he has no Dragons though. Uh, for Corruptor to work, he will need to top deck a Twilight Drake, Azur Drake, or Maligos. Okay. Well. Lothar is actually playing the zoo, by the way. Just thought I'd let the stream know. Lothar is playing the aggressor here. Things are looking really bad for him. If you're behind with an Imp Gang boss on the board, you face palm. So his move is absolutely correct. <laughs> yeah. Like, he might be tempted to go with Implosion, because Implosion for 4 on the Gang boss would be amazing, but... It's like, after hitting Acolyte with two, he's yeah. not going to do that. Well, you can maybe, um, like, Owl and play the Voidwalker, perhaps? Uh, you you might, but then you want to keep Owl for Twilight Drakes, and you, you might be expecting Twilight Drake next turn. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh there's Zombie Show. Yeah, you're right. Good call. With the, with the Void Caller, at least, you hope that you're going to get a Demon. But then Strifecore silencing it is stopping that from happening. Mm -hmm. And being Strifecore, you want to silence the voice. By the way, this Bane of Doom will be really uh, devastating next turn if he hits something big. So Strifecore mm -hmm. needs to think about that. that there is a possibility of Mulganis. He got um, to Dragon. Is there a play here better than Belcher? I think I like um, Corruptor killing the Void Walker and then trading three minions into three Imps. You want to deny the imps uh, and not lose versus random base. Have been a doom turn. Yeah, it seems so. Unless uh, if you go, hmm. can you just abusive mortal coil and then play imp gang boss void walker? I think that's actually good as well. You you again build I up. I think it's good, but like, how many times do you really get a good bane of doom? 
Uh, most of the time, but at this point you don't want to risk it, I believe. Mm -hmm. If you if you have a, a, a good play with uh, M Gangos and uh, Void Walker, you want to um, just build up your board. Okay, well he goes with that. So uh, we'll trust you. Hellfire. That doesn't seem particularly good. You'll probably just go with the Twilight Drake. Drake. Yeah. You have no hold mechanics anymore, so. Hmm. Actually, implosion is is not bad as well. If you implosion the one free, trade it to one. Uh, you have some instant board, unless you miss. So Twilight Drake might be safer. I think Twilight Drake is better because if you hit uh, two uh, on the on the Void Walker, it's so bad. You just lose your you lose your imp. You have only two imps on board. And Twilight Drake at least will be able to trade into minions. Hmm. Implosion didn't seem that bad though. It's actually. Actually, the, the result will be worse if you Twilight Drakes because um, Lothar is actually holding the silence. That's but true. this is this is the safer play. Even if it hits for two, it's still better than the Twilight option. Yeah, because of the silence. Yeah. Okay, so I believe this is the Bane of some turn. Hmm. With Doomguard, it might actually be the Void Caller. Okay. I like the Bane of Doom though. Like the worst you can get is the Blood Imp, but other than that, whatever you get is fine. Uh, if you get a Void Walker, all right, that's uh, didn't do much. But you can get Morganis, you can get Illidan. Yeah, and then next turn you play like so well on Curve, you can Void Call it and taunt something. Yeah, and you're probably gonna at least have like an Imp left from the Imp Gang boss. So I think if you're thinking for the this turn and the next, the Bane of Doom is the best play as you mentioned. Like you want to find those uh, Bane of Doom turns where you will not lose if you get a Blood Imp. And this is certainly a board where you will not lose if you get a Blood Imp. And if you get something good, you're, you're good with that. Okay, well, doesn't go with it. Still seems good, it's just like next turn, it's not as, it's not as nice. I feel like being Strife Girl would like to tap. Uh, I, f I think he doesn't have that many cards in hand. And you want to draw into into options. Mm -hmm. I think that was uh, some emoting going on. Maybe we missed it. <laughs> yeah, possibly. Well, yeah, that void caller is just so scary if you're strife crow. Twilight Drake and Farseer makes sense as well. Like this is uh, you fight with the board, but then Owl is really good. Yeah. For Lothar. It's devastating. So how much damage is it? How overwhelmed. Uh, Lothar can get a free Doomguard by the way, uh, if he if he chooses to just uh, run his Void Caller into the Twilight Drake. But I don't I don't think that's that's needed that much. And then Bane of Doom. I kind of like that. All right. Alganis? 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 No, damn. Well, 6 6 is uh, still very good. Yeah, it is. That's why I kind of wanted Strife Crew to tap, because it seems like without the Shadow Flame, uh, he will be just uh, not having the cards. And Zul will get an advantage. OK. Interesting line of play here where you don't want to leave anything on his board, you want to kind of uh, not have too many small creatures on your board, and you want to save Power Whelming for Burst. Lothar is in an amazing position. I don't think that Strife can actually come back from here. Um, he doesn't have enough options, and the only clear possible clear will be a Shadow Flame with a really big creature, uh, which this deck does not run. More Blackwing Corruptors to clear board. Well, he's going to get uh, quite a few more turns here because of the taunts and uh, the nature of the stack. And maybe that will lead into a really good turn with Hellfire. But then with Dr. Boom in silence. It seems like Lothar yeah. has it in a bag. Next turn, he should be able to lethal with Defender of Argus and Power of Whelming. Implosion is not going to help. Hmm. If you hold fire and, and hit perfect implosion, you're still you're still dead. Yeah. Well, you don't die to the board, do you? 
if you hit perfect implosion and hellfire and the boom bots hit for one you're at 12 and there's 11 on board yeah no wait you i think it might be belcher and imp gang uh sorry uh implosion the doom guard and hope for four i think that might be the most survival play yeah you probably implosion first to see if you hit it or not Okay, he taps to try something. Uh, Corruptor is nice, but it's not going to help him. And no. Lothar has six more damage. Lothar is just smiling. He knows he won this game. Uh, I mean, when, when the rope has one third left on it and nothing has been played from your opponent in this position, there's there's nothing there's nothing you don't smile about. That's a pretty huge indication that you won. Yeah, pretty huge. So now, is Lothar going to BM Strife Crow? You think so? Well, he might just go for the kill. I think at this point there is no reason to BM. He got a good match. He said he's going to win with Striker, and it's the fourth time he's winning with Striker, I believe. 4 0 in matches. Doom. All right. Lothar wins. Third time's a charm for the Zulok, and Lothar moves on to day two of HTC Recharged. That's pretty impressive. And um, Strife Crow eliminated. I believe that we don't have any more Cloud9 players in the tournament. Nope. We oh, also sorry about that, Nimsh. <laughs> well, I will be making the finals, so we will have at least one Cloud9 person. Somewhere. Okay, okay, all right. Well, uh, let's, let's have a look at the bracket so you guys can see what's going on here. We've gone through uh, half of our games today, so we know... Uh, four players that qualify, and right now at this stage, we're going to see uh, who those four players will be matched up against. So, uh, Bunny Muffin has uh, qualified first, and he will be facing either Trump or Life Coach. Uh, Asahida will be facing either Dog or Purple Drink. Um, Gara will be facing either uh, Kolimoen or uh, Zele. And Lothar will be facing either uh, New Guri or Forsen. Oh man, if Forsen advances, Lothar will have to face the winner in yeah. the previous tournament. For those that haven't seen uh, the first HTC tournament, this is this is the second one. This is the recharged HTC tournament. Uh, Forsen did actually end up winning that one. So the defending champion uh, has not been knocked out yet, but at the same time he hasn't had an opportunity to be knocked out. But uh, that will happen today. We will see how that will unfold. Uh, but before that, we will see the... Um, Trump versus Life Coach game uh, in a few minutes here. Uh, any thoughts on that before we uh, head into a break? I'm really excited to see that match. I don't think those players played. Uh, at least I haven't seen them play before. Uh, Trump versus Life Coach. Uh, last HTC tournament, Trump did really well. I, I think he f he definitely advanced the second day, mm -hmm. and uh, he was really uh, close to winning versus uh, Strife Club, I believe, at some point. So. Um, well played by him and Life Coach. You know, like a lot of people know Life Coach is one of the best players in the world and one of the That's slowest true. players in the world. So they hey, every player are... today is roping, right? Yeah, yeah, they do rope a lot. Uh, but I'm really excited. So guys, if you're excited for the match, tell your um, your friends, that, tell your mom, and uh, tell everybody so that they can come and watch Life Coach versus Trump.